So today is one of my favorite days of the year. And you know why? It's because I'm planting my diplodemia. I have been waiting on this for over a month. I bought my diplodemias, then it got too cold at night. So I have been nursing these in our garage every day for four weeks. And finally today, the weather is warm enough. We're over 50 degrees consistently at night. And my diplodemia bushes are gonna go in the planters around my pool and it is going to be beautiful. And something new I'm doing this year, I am planting an herb garden in my, uh oh. Oh, we got zoomies. I bought this elevated planter box for basil, rosemary, and thyme. And I'm gonna get all of that planted today. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how I do it, where I decide to plant everything, how I plant everything, and I'm gonna spruce up around my pool. Diplodenias are my favorite flower to plant around our pool because we have full sun on our pool area basically all day long. It is scorching hot back here. I live in Kentucky. It is humid, it is hot, and we need a plant that is going to survive the spring, summer, and fall, and diplodenias are the answer. They have vibrant, beautiful, huge blooms that really don't require much attention. You don't have to pick them. You don't have to trim them. Keep them watered just a little bit. They don't like to be super wet and they will bloom from spring until frost in the fall. You just need to make sure that it's consistently over 50 degrees at night before you plant your diplodenias because they don't like to be cold. I have four very large pots about this size around our pool and I'm gonna plant a three gallon diplodenia bush in each of those large planters. And we have three smaller planter boxes right here and in these I'm gonna plant one gallon diplodenia bushes. People get so confused about the difference in a diplodenia bush and there is a diplodenia vine. They look exactly alike. Their flowers are the same, their leaves are the same. Bushes will grow in height, they get full and they will hang over your planter box. Vines are long and skinny, they stay upright and they will start to put off little finger shoots that will attach themselves onto this if I were to plant a vine here and grow little spriggly vines that have flowers along the way. So the best way to tell when you go to your nursery to buy your diplodenia, just look at the tag. It will say bush or vine. Isn't that beautiful? That's what a new bud looks like. And a full bloom is this. And this is what they'll look like their entire time out here in the sun. That's a big wheelbarrow of pot and soil you got. Ooh, heavy. And in my elevated planter box, I showed this to you all in another video. This is from Amazon. I'll link it in the description box below. We put wheels on it so that we can move it around, but basically it's gonna sit right here. And I am planting 12 basil plants, three rosemary plants. I originally bought this size and some of them died already. So we replaced them with much larger plants. We've got rosemary and one plant of thyme. And that is going to completely fill up this two by four elevated planter box. So we saw something interesting on Instagram about planting herbs in flower beds like this. And it said to take a cardboard box and tear it up into pretty big pieces and mix it in the bottom of your soil. So it'll help retain the moisture in the water. So we're going to give it a try. So we just took two small boxes, ripped it up. I'm going to put another layer of soil in here and kind of mix it all up and then put the fertilized soil on the top and then plant my herbs. So what are you doing? I'm mixing up my cardboard. You, you told me it was a great uh, moisture retainer in my soil for my herbs, so that's what we're doing. Do it evenly. I, well, you know. How about that? So, next layer we're going to do potting soil that has fertilizer in it. This is going to be the top. And then because it's an elevated planter box, I don't want my herbs all the way to the top like I would if it was a flower. So I think one layer of that and we'll be ready to plant. This is how we have the herb garden laid out. I have 12 basil plants, four rows of three. Randy thinks I should plant them in rows so that if you know I need to weed or get in here, I can. Then we're gonna group our rosemary together in the corner because it gets really big. 
Here's my one puny right there. We're gonna group him in and then time. Hope it'll kind of grow over in this area. So that's the plan. I'm going to take my little plant and I'm going to leave the plastic thing on it and I'm going to dip it in a bucket of water <laughs> and get it really wet and moist before I plant it. So when you pull your plant out, your roots are moist and the dirt is moist and it just goes right in the hole. Dry. And what's the reason to put it in the bucket? So it saturates the roots and the soil so it goes in the dirt wet and I guess doesn't suck all the water out of the dirt immediately and it's supposedly really good for your plant to be planted very, very wet. So like the roots at the bottom down here, if you were to pull this out, I'll show you. Come up here. See how dry the roots are? They're just dry. We wanna get them wet and saturated and then plant them. I ran out of potting soil. Randy went to go get some more. I have two and a half plants left to do and then I'm done. But look at this. This is when I am my happiest. Dirty, sweating, I'm hot. There's dirt and soil all over my clothes. I love it. And I know so many women don't like to get outside and get their feet dirty and their hands muddy. If you've never tried it, try it. Just go outside, plant something. Feel what it feels to look like this look at my fingernails but it is it is incredible it's an incredible feeling to have your hands in the dirt and tonight we're actually going to a bourbon festival so as soon as I'm done I'm gonna go in this is all gonna just wash right away and I'm gonna get cuted up and fancied up and we're gonna go out if you think planting and getting dirty and sweating isn't your thing really just give it a try
So everything's planted. Now I need to water it really, really well. But the trick is don't use a hard stream of water. Don't just completely saturate and soak your plants. A little sprinkle of water just to saturate the dirt, clean your plants off, get the soil wet, and your plants will be happy. Don't kill them with water, but do water them nicely. So this is a three gallon plant that I put in this huge planter, and that is the perfect size because diplodenias grow so fast. They will get taller, they will completely fill up this planter, they will hang over the sides, and they will bloom like this for the next six months. That's why they're fantastic plants. I love them around my pool because I can use a very small plant in the beginning and in the next six months, this will be a gigantic plant. If you watch more videos on my channel as the summer progresses, you will be amazed at how much this little diplodenia will grow. So the planting's finally finished. Just took a couple hours of kind of hard work, a lot of sweat and some dirty hands. And then there's my little herb garden. I'm gonna be making basil pesto. We're gonna use rosemary and potatoes. Randy's gonna use the thyme when he does the chickens on the rotisserie and smokes meat. And so I'm super excited to have an herb garden this year. So every year I tell you all in my videos, if you have a sunny spot, get some diplodenias. They come in so many colors. I love the red out by my pool, but there's yellow, there's white, there's pink, there's coral, and they're just wonderful, wonderful, full sun, full sunshine and heat plants. So now it's time for me to enjoy the fruits of my labor today and all my plants and herbs. See you later.